Your goal, get taller or fix your discrepancy. Your desire, make it back to where you are right now in one piece. Hey, what's up guys? Victor from Cyborg for Life. And today I wanted to talk about the three biggest obstacles between you and getting lemonade done and how to overcome them. So first up, we have the market induced issue, which is the cost of the lemon cleaning process. And I call it a process because it's more than just the surgery, right? It has the surgery, the rehab, and other basic living expenses. Now, some clinics will package their services all together for a single cost, whereas others, you'll have to bootstrap it all together. Regardless, it can get really, really expensive. For example, in the United States, the surgery can range anywhere from seventy-five dollars to $120,000, not including living expenses and a complication fund. So why is limb lengthening so darn expensive? Well, it's mainly because of three factors. The first reason is the medical device, you know, the lengthening devices used to complete the process. Currently, there's only a few B2B medical device companies on the market who sell their technology to the surgeons who perform the magic. The other reason is that it's a very niche and specialized procedure that should only be done by the most advanced orthopedic surgeons due to its technicality and lengthy list of complications that could arise. The final and third reason is sort of a combo of the first two, and that is a high demand for limb lengthening yet a low supply of device companies and specialized surgeons who do this. So how do we overcome this obstacle of price? Well, the device companies could either reduce their costs out of the goodness of their heart, but spoiler alert, that's not gonna happen, so don't bet on that. Other medical device companies join the party and force the cost to go down, either by undercutting in price, okay, or they come out with a new lengthening device that seriously outfeatures what's currently on the market and then what's currently on the market has to undercut in price. Another way to reduce the price is to work around the lengthening device issue entirely with a next gen lengthening alternative that you know throws the entire industry on its head by reducing invasiveness, cost, complications, and recovery time. But for the purpose of this video and staying on topic, we'll save that for the future. Finally, having new orthopedic surgeons enter the fray and adopt the lemon and deformity reconstruction specialty might help some mid-tier clinics you know, reduce their price because they'll be commoditized. And in order to stay competitive, they have to reduce their price. While others you know, with a premium pricing might have to actually increase their price even more to distance themselves and stand out from the pack if they're strategic enough to do so. But if none of this happens, then it will force you, the prospective patient, to pay even more out of pocket from your assets, savings, investments, or side hustles, which I'm sure nobody wants considering how expensive the procedure already is. The next big obstacle patients face when considering limb lengthening is recovering from the procedure. It's completely understandable. Your goal, get taller or fix your discrepancy. Your desire, make it back to where you are right now in one piece. So why is it that so many patients fear getting back their preoperative abilities and athleticism? Well, it's because they fear the unknown. You don't know limb lengthening until you've done limb lengthening or something worse, since it's so different from the other procedures out there. I mean, just think about it. So many patients fear not being able to walk normally, run fast, jump high, lift heavy, or even worry about developing issues later on down the line. The thing is, is that I've seen so many patients recover super well from this procedure, and even some have said that they've reco recovered better than they were before the surgery. But there's three main problems that patients face when aiming to recover. They're impatient, they lack strategy, and they lack proper rehab resources. Limb lengthening is the one surgery that will force patients out of you, okay? You break your legs, and then what? You wanna start recovering right away, start healing? Nope, you gotta wait months to hit your lengthening goal, and then your bones have to heal back to full strength. Then you have to have a rehab and rebuilding strategy in place to fully regain your range of motion, and enough muscle strength to stabilize a normal walk, a fast run, a powerful jump, and strong lifting ability, okay? This includes physical therapy, consistent stretches, cardio, and minding your nutrition, okay? It's a four-pronged approach. And if you miss one of the aspects, um, then you delay your, and slow down your recovery process. And when it comes to a lack of proper resources, what exactly am I talking about? Well, most of you guys don't know, but there are five different companies out there right now that have products that would expedite your recovery process in the following ways. Bone healing, inflammatory swelling control, reducing scar tissue adhesions, flexibility issues, walking gait analysis with real-time dynamic feedback. And the worst part is, is that I've reached out to all of these companies in the most professional way possible to open their eyes to a new untapped market with patients in need, yet they still refuse to respond. Why is that? Well, they won't say it, but I know the answer, and that is because of the stigma that still surrounds the stature lengthening aspect of limb lengthening. 
But you know what? It won't be long before, you know, these comp one of their competitors jumps into the market and then they're going to have to make a move or get lost behind. At the end of the day, to you companies out there, it's completely unacceptable when there are tons of patients who could use your technology to expedite their recovery and improve their final result, yet you sit on your hands and maintain your PR. It should be your moral obligation to help them. Hopefully that's going to change one day. The final obstacle that I find blocks patients from getting lung lengthening surgery done is complications. No one wants to have a severe muscle contracture that requires soft tissue releases, a delayed or non-union that requires follow-up injections or invasive bone grafting surgeries, uh, nerve issues that need de a decompression, uh, device malfunctions that put your lengthening process on hold until it's fixed, malalignment issues that can cause pre-arthritic um, joint stress, deep bone infections that need heavy courses of antibiotics or nail swapping, um, or the worst yet, embolisms that could be fatal. As unlikely as it is for a patient to develop a complication, I still find that the lung lengthening surgeons hold a big part of the responsibility here. A lack of experience is not knowing how to deal with an issue before it gets really bad or causing one in the first place due to poor surgical skill. On top of that, clinics using flashy marketing to lure patients in the door and then being patient pleasers, you know, allowing patients to lengthen to absurd amounts so they can feel like they got their money's worth, even if it means that they, they're going to further reduce their peak performance potential on the back end. So how do we get around these complications? Well, I feel like there needs to be some sort of standardized protocol for new orthopedic surgeons to proceed through. For example, doing a fellowship and advanced training at the top clinics to learn the safest methods and best of care. Okay, that's a good start. Basically, they need to model success and mimic the greats. This is what I did when I first got into bodybuilding. I would read everything I could about training, nutrition, posing, natural supplementation, and then I would apply it, okay? And over time, my experience, it would grow, and I got better. And now, I like to say I'm one of the best in the world. What can I say? But besides acquiring a standard world-class lung lengthening fellowship or certification, I think surgeons should be honest, transparent, and humble, and not obscure things from prospective patients. Okay, that means that when a mishap happens and you're asked about it, don't shy away. Take responsibility and explain how you'll do better. Many of the top surgeons have admitted that they've had issues in the past, they've changed their surgery techniques and have now gotten a better result that they can have a more predictable outcome for their future patients. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you become great, okay? Things like that garner you way more respect than if you try to keep quiet, flaunt, or sweep things under the rug. Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts about what's holding you back. What kind of obstacles are preventing you from getting lemon things surgery done? Let me know that down below in the comments. And as always, if you found the video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. And until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace.